Welcome to Munda Makeover. We have traveled all over Zambia to find hard-working farmers. We want to share their success stories. And where there are challenges, we will bring experts to help them gain the extra knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields. And increase their income. We will see how farmers from across the country can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they improve their farms. On Munda Makeover! So, Katanana. Yes, Cosy. Can I ask you a personal question? Uh, personal? Okay, maybe. Have you ever done something you regret? Oh, regret? Who hasn't? You want a list? <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> it's just, that's our story for this week. Regrets? Tell me more. Well, maybe we should let our farmer tell us that. I mean, it's only fair. Cosy, you're such a tease. Well, you're going to regret this. Mm, the last one to get there reveals their biggest regret. Cosy! Cosy! <laughs> I'll catch you! This week, we're in Kankoma village in Eastern Province, and we're visiting Stanwell Chirwa. Stanwell is married to Martha, and they have seven children. Oh, man. Oh. How are you, farmers? Fine. And how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, thank you. Have a seat there. Have you caught your breath? I have. Have you always done farming? Before I started farming, uh, I was involved in that activity, which is well known as irigo poaching. Oh, what kind of animals were you poaching? Any, as long as we've met. Wow. So I, I, I was not very free on doing that business. Oh. How did you come from the poaching into farming? Yeah, from there, it was in the year of 2003, mm -hmm. when I was approached with the Comagos. Mm -hmm. Then they came to sensitize on me to mm -hmm. say, poaching, you see, so, 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 so. Mm -hmm. Then I agreed with them to say that really, illegal poaching really, it was really bad. Mm. And it was really bad work. Otherwise, if I had to continue doing that work, I would have died already. Mm -hmm. wow. Yes. Thank you very much for your honesty. That's a, a very touching story. Cosy, I think it's time we met our experts so that they can explain to us how a poacher like Mr. Chirwa has become a respectable farmer like yes. Mr. Chiro. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. I agree, yes. Kachanana. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go now and we'll see you later. Thank you. Get some Thank you. <laughs> In some ways, Stanwell's change from a poacher to a farmer is also thanks to groundnuts. They have been a very profitable crop for him. So now, I'm going to find out more about groundnut production and why they're such a good choice for our Zambian farmers. Let's go and meet our experts. He's Luke Lungu from Komako, and he's going to focus on land preparation. Before we talk about his farm, let me know what are the benefits of groundnut farming? By nature, groundnuts have got uh, ability to fix nitrogen back into the soil, okay. being in the family of legumes. Then groundnuts is a good source of income. Okay. And the last one, groundnuts uh, are easy to grow. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chirwa, you've been farming groundnuts for some time. When you look at what you put in, how much did you get out? The seed was 50 kg. How many bags did you get out? 15 bags shared, mm -hmm. then plus 30. Okay. Unshared. Mr. Luca, yes. can you tell us, is this a good outcome or can we do more? It was good. Can we say bumper harvest? We would say almost bumper harvest. Almost a bumper harvest. Yes. For him to have a bumper harvest, mm. the first cardinal thing that he needs to 
work on mm. is his land preparation. Okay. Yeah. When his, is he supposed to start preparing his land? Early as April, May. Okay. Uh, immediately after he has harvested his maize, mm -hmm. uh, then he can start land preparation. So let's see how to do it. Some of Standwell's fellow farmers are here to help us. After all, many hands make light work. So I would need the, the pegs and then the measuring tapes and the rope. Okay. There okay. you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have our rope tied to one of the pegs. Use a rope to make sure you plant in a straight line. This makes weeding easier and leaves the soil between undisturbed. Okay, huh? just like that. We are going to now mm -hmm. mark the area where we are going to make our rib line. Okay. Because it's the first point, so we need to mark it. Make sure just that we... Just on the side. Yeah. Okay, this is simple enough. Hmm. Our rib line is supposed to be 15 centimeters deep. Okay. Why? Because at the 7 to 8 centimeters, hmm. there's what we call a hard pan. Okay. So if you don't break that, still more, even if water is collected, your crops will not have enough water okay. during the dry spells. So how do you know that this is actually 15 centimeters? Well, it's very easy. Mm. Uh, dip your hand mm -hmm. in the rip line, mm -hmm. then check. If the line reaches here, mm -hmm. it means it's 15 centimeters. It's 15. When the first row is finished, move the line 45 centimeters to dig the remaining rip lines. Yeah, so now that we are done making our rip lines. Yes, now we're going to the next part, which is feeding the land with glyricidia. Yes. So we leave the stalks on the trees, huh? Yeah, we just leave. Just the leaves. The leaves. Yeah. Okay, this is nice. And it's fun. I think children would enjoy doing this. Are they yeah. really doing They enjoy. come with you, Mr. Yeah, Chirwa? Yes, Mr. Chirwa, yes. Okay, yes. nice. When you want to apply Grisidia leaves, right. uh, you need to have uh, a full application. I'll apply like this. Okay. So now, after applying our leaves, mm. we need now to do our back feeding. What we want here, Mm -hmm. is all the nitrogen, the potassium, the phosphorus in mm. the green, green grisidia to be incorporated with the soil. Mm. Because if you leave this open, it means you lose all the nutrients that are here. Mm. Then when we do this, it means we are done. Oh. I can go sleep and wait for the rains to come. Okay. But applying of the leaves should be done a month or three weeks or a month before planting. Saves you money, right? Yeah. Hmm, all this sounds good, but let's get down to the details. Let's break it down. By digging a rip line only where he's planting, Standwell will keep the moisture in the soil. So important when the rains are unreliable. And by filling the rip line with Gliricidia leaves, he can save money on fertilizer. Well, like you have seen, early land preparation will save you time, will save you money, it is less labor intensive and will protect your fields. And now that we've got some extra time, perhaps we can have some Munkoya gentlemen? Definitely. Yes. All right, we'll see go. you. <laughs> so you've heard the term liquid gold. And no, it's not something you expect to find in the copper belt. It's found all across the country and it's made by flying insects. Have you guessed it? Let's go find out. Well, I think these beehives give the game away. I've asked expert Chipeta Lowani from Komako to help us understand how honey can be changed into liquid gold. But first, let's ask Stanwell how much money can be made from beekeeping. So, uh, how many beehives do you have here? Me and I have 95 of them. 95, 95 beehives? Yeah. How much honey do you produce? Uh, 18 to 20 in each box. Wow, that's a lot it's of honey. A lot of money. And how much does honey sell for? The honey itself costs 17 kwacha. Wow, that is... So uh, I'm probably supposed to get 54,000 kwacha per year. Wow, from honey. I'm convinced the numbers certainly seem to add up. Honey is certainly a profitable business if it's done well. So, let's get some tips on how best to keep bees. Where do I keep my hives? 
where you have seen that uh, the water points are crossed, uh -huh. and then the three species are Shiombo, Mitondo, and uh, both these are too supportive to beekeeping. I see. Yeah. What challenges might, might I face when I start beekeeping and honey farming? So one, honey badges. Okay. Yeah. Then two, there is the black ants. Then again, there is climate change. Mm. Yeah, shortage of water. Mm -hmm. it, become, it become a real challenge mm -hmm. to be keeping. Mm -hmm. So a farmer must take sometimes a tire. Mm -hmm. He just take a tire and put water in there. Right. Yeah, so this is the feeding on the, bee, the, on the bees. Okay, wow. For the black ants, we get grease. We just put the grease on top of the, of the, the same branch on, mm -hmm. o, over the tree. Then the black ants will not come. Now the dangerous. Yeah. And then for the honey badger, honey badger <laughs> we hang the hive. But how do I get this big box, which is potentially heavy? How do I hang this in the tree successfully, Mr. Chira? Maybe you can show me. There is what we call this hook. And this hook, it has wired itself here. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to tie this mm -hmm. in this box of ours. Mm -hmm. Then it will be like this. Mm -hmm. Then we shall pull it up then I, and hang it on top of the tree here. Even if there can be 20 kgs of comb honey inside, this thing cannot do anything, but it will still manage to, to lift it. Absolutely. And yes. uh, Mr. Chipeta, is there anything else we need to pay attention Just to? Just add, no, or, or to add on. From the ground, it is uh, three meters. Uh -huh. Yes, three to four meters. That's very important. Yeah, so we use a rope. Mm -hmm. yeah, to measure we, the distance? Yes. Okay. So why are we putting our hive three meters off the ground? To prevent fire. Right. So you find that there is some bush fires. Mm -hmm. So once you hang the hive at the... Low distance. Low distance. You find that you, when fire comes, this plastic will be bent. As a result, then beneath the, bee, the bees inside, they are not working there. Sometimes they will be absconding. Right. Yes. They'll yes. run away from the they hive. Are, yes, yes. And we have so, no honey. Yeah, so mm. this is why now we are hanging at three meters or four meters. A perfectly made and hung beehive. So thank you very much for your valuable knowledge and your valuable time. So there you have it, beekeeping. And before we leave, three important things to remember about what we've seen on this amazing farm. Number one. It's good for the trees as it uses trees for the hanging of our hives and it also needs the beautiful flowers for the pollination that is a key element of producing honey. Number two, for us to have a good harvest and a good crop of honey, we must always pay attention to the maintenance of the area where we keep our bees. And thirdly, and maybe the most important, profit. Honey farming is something that a lot of us should definitely go into. True liquid gold. But that's not all. Coming up. How to store maize without using chemicals. And how good planning can increase profits. Now, my next job is to find out how to stop weevils from attacking maize in storage. But I've been sent to meet Stanwell and our expert Luke from Kamako out here in the field. This is odd. He said maize storage. This is outside. So where are they? Look, no leaves all this place. There you are, Mr. Luca and oh. Mr. Chirwa. Yes. You told me we're going to be looking for storage or doing storage right now. What are we doing outside here? It all starts with in the field. In the field? Yeah, so we are here to actually harvest leaves from a Griscidia tree because we need the same leaves to treat our maize. Okay. Yeah. Is this tree good enough? It has very few leaves. What about that one? Is that Which any one? good? Mm, I think let's go and check. This one. Okay. And I think this one will really help us. Right. So we can start harvesting this one, right? Definitely we start. Let's get a go on it. Yeah. 
Wow, Mr. Luca, yes. we were just talking about how Glaricidia is so helpful with groundnuts and now we're talking about how it's going to help with storage of maize. This plant is an amazing tree. Not only that. Really? Yeah. There's more? There is more to that. Tell me, what is it? You know, this tree also, mm. it also helps in a, a carbon credits. Carbon credits, what's yeah. that? Communities where they are growing these trees, mm -hmm. uh, protecting their natural resources very mm. well. They use a minimum tillage and mm. also conservation smart agriculture. Right. They can also receive money. Wow, yeah. this is so interesting. Yeah. Is this already happening with you, Mr. Chirwa? Yes, yes, please. Really? You got money just from planting these trees? Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Chirwa, how often do you receive payments for this? Uh, we receive these payments after two years. Yeah, so the first one was one, uh, around 1.4 million mm -hmm. and the second validation they got uh, 1.9 mm. and now the third one they have up to 7 million. Woo! Sounds so good. I think I'm moving to Kankoma village. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You are mostly welcome. Mr. Luca, is this enough now? It's enough. Okay, let's go, Mr. Chira. Okay, Lead the way to the storage. Yes, please. Oh, wow. So this is where you keep your maize. Yes, please. Very nice. Mm. So, Mr. Luca. Yes. You're going to show us how to use Gliricidia leaves. Exactly. That's why we have come. Mm -hmm. Is that for this maize to be uh, treated mm -hmm. and we, to be pre prevented from weevils, mm. we need to start with the Gliricidia leaves. Okay, let's do that now. All right. So We'll hold the bag for you and you can... Okay. Okay, that's the two full applicate. Two so hands this is full. It. So, okay. with the glycidia for the first layer, we are done. Mm -hmm. Now we need to put a tin of maize on top of the glycidia. Okay. Yes. All right, so we filled up this 20 liter container bucket, right? 20 yeah. liter bucket? Yes. So now we have to put the maize ah. on top. Okay. Uh, the first layer that we had put for the seed. Okay. When you are done, mm -hmm. we have now to repeat. Again, another okay. layer. Another layer of glycidia, then we put again a tin of maize. Mr. Luca, how does this stop the maize from being attacked by pests? So, uh, the sap that is in the leaves mm. is toxic to weevils. Mm. So, when they actually sniff the smell, mm. they cannot even come in this bag. Mm. So, it repels the weevils. Wow. So how long would this last? If you do it nicely the way we are doing it, mm -hmm. uh, it will take five to six months mm -hmm. uh, and your maize will be protected from weevils. This is an organic way of preserving our maize. Right. There's no need of saying, no, there's an overdose. Mm. What? No, no, no. You can even put all the leaves now in. Oh. Because there's no overdose. They're, they're not harmful to ah. human consumption. Oh, okay. So, as you can see, mm. our maize and our fresh glycidia leaves mm. are all closed up in this bag. Mm. You expect now this maize to stay for the next five to six months. Wow. No any weevil in, in this bag. When storing maize, always remember to keep the bags off the ground and away from the walls. This helps keep them dry and free from rodents. And we're done? Yeah, we are. Wow, this is good, Mr. Luca. Yes. It seems farming with Glericidia trees is not only good for the climate, but it's also good for our farmer's pocket, isn't it, Mr. Chirwa? Yes, yes, it is. Well, all we have to say is we feel mm. about mm. this. <laughs> for our final story today, we want to introduce Stanwell to the benefits of record keeping. Records are the first step to good planning decisions that can end up with a farmer making a profit or a loss. So I've asked Mr. Dhaka from the Ministry of Agriculture to tell us all about it. What is it that you are doing here? I'm counting my plants so that I should take them to the market. Oh, okay, so you sell some seedlings as well. Uh, yeah. How many seedlings do you have in total? About 3,000. Wow, 3,000. 3, and uh, you remember this off the top of your head? Yes. yes okay, yes. do you record somewhere where you keep all of these numbers? No, I don't record, but I just keep them in my mind. Mm, brilliant memory, I see. But there's so much on your farm. There's so many things I've seen. Yes. You've got livestock yes. and you've got crops as well. How are you keeping record of, you know, the different treatments that you're 
giving your animals. Mm -hmm. I just remember in my heart, <laughs> then yeah, you gave the vaccine. <laughs> I need a memory as good as yours, yes, Mr. Chira, yes, because it's, yes. it's really working very mm -hmm. hard. Mr. Darker, yeah. what do you think? Do you think this is a, an effective way to manage and uh, keep track of things on the farm? If you just remember by mind, you will think everything is fine. Mm. But the moment you keep records, you are able to tr keep track to know uh, how you are moving as a business. Exactly. Yes. Are you going forward? Are you stagnant? Or are you going backwards? Yes. Uh -huh. Of course, you have said you are able to remember. Yeah. But I doubt if you are able to remember what you did 10 years ago, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a difficult yeah, one. That's, that's, that's the thing. That's thing. Yeah. 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 So it's very important that you put things eh, in return. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. uh, for example, we are talking about uh, Maybe the beehives. Yes. Yes. How many kgs of that, honey that, that kg. is it able to produce? Yes. It's according to the season. Okay. 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 Maybe 18 to 20. Okay. Mm. The other season, you might see that it's 20 to 25. Ah. Yes. Some seasons you have 17, others 25. Yes. Meaning there's a very big variance there. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what, what happens when you have 18 kgs. Mm -hmm. What happens during that season? Mm. Is it a season where you have delayed rains or what, what happens? Then the, the other thing, Mr. Chirwa, um, climate change. Yes. You are aware of the term climate change? Yes. In the past years, mm. rains could come up in the, year, in the month of October. Mm -hmm. But looking at this time now, you find that rains starts in December. Okay. Meaning that there is that climate change. Okay. Things okay. are changing. Good. As you plan to grow your crops or to keep your bees and everything else, yes. you have to look at the change of the in, climate. In climate. Yes. You have a reduced period of rain. Yes. Uh -huh. So now, in that case, there's very, it's very important for you to keep a record of when the effective rains started. Mm -hmm. Like for this year, this season, when was the first day you got the effective rains? That was on 18th. 18th of December. December. Yes. Yeah. So then when was the last day of effective rains, if you can remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see? <laughs> there we go, we got you there. <laughs> yeah. you know, but you, that's very important information to remember. Yes. You have to calculate how many days was that. Okay. Uh -huh. Then you compare the next season or the previous season, you okay. see how many days also. Because you have already told us that you planted the 40 kgs this right, season, exactly. you planted 50 kgs last, last season. season, this season you got 11, last season you got 9. Yes. But you are not looking at how much rain mm -hmm. was yes. in that That's period. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We can blame the seed, meanwhile it was the season. Right. You see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to have those records. I see. Yes. Absolutely. Making sense? Let's break it down and take a look at how to make a record. Record books should be as simple as possible with each crop or animal given a separate page. For example, groundnut records. Keep a note of the variety you used, the day rain started, the day you planted, what type of land preparation you did, any fertilizer or compost added and their dates, any weeding and their dates, the harvest and the price obtained. Good records lead to good planning decisions and so to bumper profits. Remember farmers, with good record keeping, it's easy to find out how much money you're making. Simply subtract your costs from your income. And there's your profit. Mr. Chira, how are you feeling about what our expert has come to tell us here? Have you found it very valuable? Very, very much. Yes, Please. indeed. Happy? Yeah. Very, yeah. very much happy. I will even start recording what I'm doing. Absolutely Excellent. fantastic. Excellent. I think that was the whole point of yeah. the exchange. So I'm happy to hear that Good. you've got so much information that you feel comfortable enough to start keeping records. Yes. Yeah. 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 So next yes. time uh, I visit the farm, I expect to find a big, big book. Yeah. Yeah. A very big book. Yes. <laughs> All of the records. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. So, Mr. Chira, thank you so much for receiving us on your farm and also introducing us to this beautiful Chira clan. Absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much. But that's all we have time for this week. And we'll see you all next week on Munda Makeover! Makeover.